In this segment, we are going to reload the 9mm Luger. We have a batch of clean brass ready to reload. Be sure to inspect them carefully for damage, wear, or signs of failure such as split case mouths, cracks on the side of the case, or abnormal bulging. Be sure to eliminate any cases unfit for reloading, such as aluminum cases. Some reloaders will deprime their cases of spent primers before tumbling. Others leave the spent primers in to prevent media from plugging the flash hole. First, we'll size our cases in the full-length sizing die. We'll use a single-stage press so we can see each step separately. Pistol dies are available in steel and carbide. This one is a carbide die. The advantages of the carbide die are that you don't have to lube the case nor remove lube from the case afterwards. When setting up a carbide sizing die, run the die down until it just contacts the top of the shell holder with the ram raised in the utmost position. Once you have the die touching the shell holder, secure the die lock ring. When using a carbide die, it's best to put only very light pressure on the bottom of the die with a shell holder because heavy pressure can crack the carbide portion of the die. After securing the lock ring, adjust the decamping rod assembly so it protrudes approximately 3 16 from the bottom of the die. Then lock the decapping rod in place. Okay, now let's resize some cases. Next, we'll check case length using calipers. The maximum allowable length for a 9mm Luger is 0.754 inches. If any of the cases reach or exceed the maximum allowable length, then you need to trim the entire batch of cases. If you need to trim, follow up with a light deburring of the case neck and case mouth inside and out. None of this batch exceeds the maximum case length, so we'll move on. Before moving on to the next step, clean the primer pocket using a primer pocket uniform or a primer pocket brush. Next, we'll expand the cases in the expander die, which opens the case mouth to accept the bullet. A portion of the expander rod in the die has a belling or flaring shoulder. The purpose of the belling shoulder is to slightly flare the mouth of the case to more easily accept the bullet. Thread the expander die into the press until it contacts the shell holder in the raised position. Use the lock screw to lock the lock ring into place on the die. Then back the expander rod out so the expander rod is just entering the case mouth. Then slowly turn the expander rod down until the bell and shoulder begins to contact the case mouth. Make very small adjustments until you have just a small amount of bell on the case mouth. When using flat base bullets, especially cast bullets, belling or flaring the case mouth prevents the exposed soft lead from shaving lead off the bullet as it is seated. Now we'll go ahead and expand the rest of these cases. Next, we'll prime the cases using a Lee Auto Prime priming tool. We'll go ahead and prime the entire batch in one sitting. As the cases are primed, make sure the primer is seated flush or just below flush with the case head. Then put the cases head up into your loading block so you can visually check the entire batch when finished. Time to drop powder. Verify the amount from the reloading handbook double check the powder bottle and verify the thrown weight of the powder charge with your scale. Let's throw a few rounds. We're now ready to seat bullets using the bullet seater. We'll seat the bullet in this step and perform the crimping function in another die. Since this is a 9mm Luger that had space on the case mouth, it requires very little or no crimp 
Install the seeder so it's backed away from the shell holder a full turn so the crimping feature is not engaged. The seeder is set up to achieve the overall cartridge length from our reloading manual. Also be sure the bullet is seated to align the case mouth with a cantalure if there is one. In this example, we are using a bullet without a cantalure. Check the overall length of the completed cartridge using your calipers against the published overall length in your reloading handbook. Turn the bullet seating stem in your die to adjust the overall length. The finished length may differ slightly from the published length by a few thousandths, no more than plus or minus five thousandths because of the location of the cantalure and the bullet shape. At this point, let's go ahead and seat all of the bullets. We'll demonstrate putting a very light taper crimp on the case mouth with a separate taper crimp die, which is what you would use if you were using a progressive press. We'll run the loaded round up into the die to complete the crimping operation. As the completed round is removed from the shell holder, check each round to make sure the crimp was formed properly and that the case didn't buckle during crimping. Transfer the newly loaded ammo to a proper cartridge box and record information both on the box and in your reloading logbook.